Well, good evening, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the Inner Circle Bible Study. We are going to do a continuance, and we'll probably go for the next couple of weeks on the topics involving uh, in the breakdown of sozo. Last week, we did an introduction to what sozo is. It's the Greek word for saved, healed, and delivered. Um, we did a quick intro to that. It, it kind of lasted a little while, but and, and it was an eye-opener for some, but like I was just talking to Mark, it's really foundational that we get this thing right, and we can really move and grow in the Lord when we get some of these things uh, kind of lined out and taken care of, put to bed, whatever you want to call it, and and all that type stuff. So um, I did mention last week the um, the book that a lot of this stuff comes out of, and some of the um, a lot of the teachings come out of are very foundational. It's written by Don De Silva and Teresa Liebscher. Um, it's called Sozo, Saved, Healed, and Delivered. Um, same thing, I just picked it up on Amazon. It was it's not much at all, and it's a paperback, so it's not real. You know, it's not real thick. It's maybe uh, 190 pages. Yeah, about 190 pages or so is all. Not bad. Really good reading. A lot of great, great information. Um, this is something I've. I actually, I got into this about 14, about 14, 15 years ago uh, when I went to the ramp or when I went to um, Bethel out in California. Uh, great, great study. So a lot of good stuff in here. And we're going to get into the first segment of it tonight. Um, there is about, there's about two sections um, that we are going to kind of open up a little bit. But the first one is um, the spiritual foundations of this. And then that breaks down into four things. So the first one is forgiveness, um, shifting atmospheres, colored lenses, and love languages. And then the next segment of it will be tools. And that's the father ladder, four doors, presenting Jesus and the wall. Um, like I said, we're going to, we're not going to speed through this. We're not going to uh, go super fast. I'm going to try to take our time and really kind of hone in on what each one of these means tonight we'll probably only go we're only going to go over one um that's going to be the first segment of found of uh, forgiveness so we're going to get that squared away tonight try to get that established get that concrete laid down that a good foundation get everything settled and then get ready to move on to the next couple of things i'm not going to go super fast like i said i'm only going to go about as fast as um everybody wants to go so if we feel like we've grasped the concept then we'll move on to the next one okay it's going to be it's going to be great. Make sure you got your pens and pencils out. Um, we'll start off with prayer. But um, like I've mentioned, I think I mentioned last week, let's make sure that we are purposing ourselves to grow in this. So if we have questions and stuff, bring them up at the end and we'll and I'll try to address them and see where we go from there. But we will let the Holy Spirit continue to teach us, lead us and guide us um, and let us listen to understand and learn something new um if everybody's cool with that then also make sure that you write down or we'll bring them up at the end any prayer requests or praise reports so that we can get those um, taken care of as well so let's open up in prayer lord i just thank you for this opportunity tonight i thank you for all those who have come out tonight and and taken carved out time out of their schedules lord to really press in and and understand more of this topic of being saved, healed, and delivered, that Greek word sozo that you have expressed so well in your word. Lord, we just thank you for this time. We thank you for what you're going to bring to us tonight, Lord, and we pray that our hearts will be open to receive what it is that you have to say to us tonight, Lord. Lord, I thank you that I can be the vessel that you can use tonight. Use me however you see fit, Lord. Speak to your children and let us understand and give you praise and honor and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. So like I said, the topic we're going to discuss tonight is forgiveness. And we're going to look at, I'm going to try to break down two things here. We're going to look at um, a captive versus a prisoner. Okay. Um, let's look at these real quick. So the Webster's definition defines a captive as this. Held under control of another, but having the appearance of freedom. Especially owned or controlled by another concern and operated for its needs. So we look at this like, what is a captive? So. Jesus, he talks about it in Isaiah 61. Uh, he tells that he comes to set the captive free. And we'll look at it real quick in Isaiah 61, 1. And this is in the Passion Translation. As I've mentioned in the past, I will use different versions as I'm trying to study through here to try to get a better, uh, a little bit better understanding. We, I do, for those King James folks, I do have some King James version 
Bible tonight. I do have some scripture out of King James. Sammy's all happy now. He's going to start running. <laughs> but now out of the Passion Translation, it says this. Isaiah 61.1 says, The mighty spirit of Lord Yahweh is wrapped around me because Yahweh has anointed me as a messenger to preach good news to the poor. He sent me to heal the wounds of the brokenhearted, to tell the captives, you are free, and to tell the prisoners, be free from your darkness. I thought it was interesting that he broke those two things up, captive and prisoner. And we're going to try to get into that a little more. So captive, um, actually in the study, in the in the workbook, it talks about um, a captive is simply um, someone who has been slimed or, or and a prisoner is someone who is locked in unforgiveness. So there's there are two different things here, right? Captives are people who have been affected negatively by spiritual atmosphere around them in the environment they have encountered. So that's it's not really being bound necessarily to something. It's just like, like you said, being slimed. What the difference is, so you have a captive on one hand and you have a prisoner on the other. So what is a prisoner? Webster's defines it as this, a person deprived of liberty and kept under involuntary restraint confinement or custody and it says especially one on trial or in prison so essentially being uh being a prisoner is exactly that you're in prison you're locked in you are you're confined you are you know that's it being a captive is something you're just kind of in the middle of something but you you do appear uh to be free but you're not you're just like i said slimed um some of the basis of a lot of this right um is, is we need to understand is is, is Ephesians 6 12 and it talks about for our struggle is not against flesh and blood but against the rulers against the powers against the world the world forces of this darkness against the spiritual forces of witness in the heavenly places so we went into pretty pretty deep discussions about spiritual warfare about Ephesians 6 uh, 10 the whole thing we did about maybe five or six weeks of that study so if you if you're interested in that go back and check that out um Go back and check that out. Uh, that's on the YouTube link. If you guys got that message today, uh, check out any previous sessions that are there. Um, Billy and Kayla, I do have you guys down for that. We'll discuss that at the end for sure. So I'll make sure that I bring that up, that prayer request. Um, so like I said, so captive and prisoner, let's get back to that. Prisoner is a person deprived of liberty and kept under involuntary restraint. If we look at a prisoner, okay, we talked about Isaiah 61 saying the the Lord has come to set the captive free. And he also says to tell prisoners, be free from your darkness. Completely two different things. Look at Matthew 18 when we talk about being a prisoner. Um, Matthew 18 revolves around, and this is towards the end of it, it's verse uh, 21. It's talking about the parable of the unforgiving servant. And I can go through this real quick. And this is out of the New King James Version. It says this. Then Peter came to him and said, Lord, how often shall I forgive my brother who has sinned against me and, and I forgive him up to seven times? And Jesus said to him, I do not say up to seven times, but up to 70 times seven. And he says, therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a certain king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. Verse 24, and when he had begun to, set the, uh, to settle accounts, one was brought to him who owed him 10,000 talents. Now, during that time, 10,000 talents was a lot of money. I think it equates to like uh, maybe today, maybe like 2 million or something like that. I think I'd heard that said once. It, it was it was a lot. And it said in verse 25, but as he is not able to pay, his master commanded that he be sold with his wife and children and that he and all that he had that the payment be made. The servant, therefore, fell down before him saying, Master, have patience with me and I will pay you all. Then the master of the ser servant was moved with compassion, released him, and forgave him the debt. If you don't understand what that really means, he's this is all in red, and this is a parable that, the, that, that Jesus is telling here. He says, then the master of that servant was moved with compassion, released him, and forgave him the debt. But the servant went out and found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred denarii. And he laid, that, laid hands on him and took him by the throat, saying, Pay me what you owe me. So his fellow servant fell down at his feet and begged him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay you. And he would not, but went and threw him into prison until he should pay the debt. So when his fellow servant saw that he had what he had done, they were very grieved and told him 
and came and told their master all that he had done. Then his master, after he called him and said to him, you wicked servant, I forgave you all the debt because you begged me. Should you not also have had compassion on your fellow servant, just as I had pity on you? And the master was angry and delivered him to the torturers until he should pay all that was due to him. The key here is verse 35. It says this. So my heavenly father also will do to each of you from his heart does not forgive his brother his trespasses. So essentially what this is saying is we're going to go back to the to the basis here of forgiveness. If you don't forgive others their trespasses, he won't forgive you in heaven. That is a very difficult place to be. So that's why we're going to break down this forgiveness a little bit here. Because it is super important that we get into this place where we are free from strife, anger, resentment, bitterness, uh, all of the cousins that go that are the direct opposite of forgiveness. Okay. Forgiveness is this it is the key that unlocks the prison door of which we have been jailed in. No matter what you do, no matter what talents you have, if this is not so, if, if in, in, a, in a session, right? In, no matter what you can do to somebody, no matter how you can help them, if they are not willing to forgive, you're really kind of, you're, you're kind of tied up. So if you're ministering to somebody and you're trying to help them and you're trying to, you know, help them get through some things, you need to understand this. This is, this has to be the basis. If they are not willing to forgive whatever has happened to them. Now that, now there's a deep understanding there. Forgiveness does not mean forgetting what has happened, right? Forgiveness is, is handing the judgment of whatever has happened to them. You're handing that over to over to Jesus. It's He's going to be the ultimate judge at the end of the day. When the trumpet sounds, he is going to be the judge. It is not our, our job to do that. But for, forgiveness is actually getting freedom for yourself. It's not giving somebody else freedom. It's saying, you know what? I'm going to take this judgment of this, and I'm handing it to you, Father. And I, I don't need to be riddled with this anymore. Okay? All right. So... As I mentioned last week, if you hadn't caught it last week, you can go back and pick it up. We talked about um, have, making sure that we have a strong connection with each one of the members of the Godhead. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Forgiveness is essentially one of the first steps in that development, in that relationship development. If we don't have forgiveness, it's going to be extremely difficult without a mighty move of God to really gain understanding and grow in that relationship with each member of the Godhead. Like I said last week, each one, yes, they are one, but each one operates independently different. Father God is in heaven. Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father, making intercessions for us. But the Holy Spirit is the one that's here. He's the one that gives the power, right? So that's the one that we're actually co-laboring, we're cooperating with. Yes, Jesus lives in our heart, but he's also seated at the right hand of the Father, making intercessions for us. So we need to understand that. We need to engage the Holy Spirit and get understanding and discernment and all of these things. Where am I, where am I missing the mark here? Where, where, what's going on? What, what can I do? Because Jesus has already done everything he needs to do for me by dying on the cross. So what things can you show me, Holy Spirit? Things that I've kind of grabbed a hold of or, or put in my pockets, those, those type of things that are keeping me from a closer relationship with each and every one of you. And if we ask him, just simply ask him and he'd be in a place where we can hear what he has to say, that's when things start to revolve. That's when things start to move, right? When that identification happens, then it's up to us. What are we going to do with it? Well, now that I've been identified, now that the Holy Spirit has identified something in me that is rebellious to the Lord and his ways, now I have the opportunity and the responsibility to do something with that. It's not to hold on to it like it's some badge of honor. Oh, I'm going to stay strong because that's, I'm a man and nobody, you know, and walk around in that pride. It does absolutely nothing for your relationship with the Lord. And it does actually nothing but hinder your relationship with others. So we need to understand that when, once that is identified to us, as we go to the Holy Spirit and ask him, what things are, are am I, have I partnered with? What things uh, have I freely accepted? What things have I gotten involved in that maybe I didn't really know, know whether that was good or bad? If you don't ask the creator what is rebellious to his ways, then how will you know? You can't just go by, well, well, Joe Schmo said that uh, this was good or this was bad. Well, really? Maybe we should go to the creator. 
That's the thing is that we, we too often want to go to that easy button and, and go to the, the tangible thing instead of going to the Lord and really stopping long enough to listen and hear what he has to say. Okay. So once we understand the power of forgiveness, then the verse that I talked about last week comes into play. And that was in verse, uh, Matthew, verse 10, Matthew chapter 10, verse eight. And this is where the King James comes in. I'm going to, I'm going to read it from the King James. And it says, heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils, quote, freely, ye, freely. I'm just typing so that I'm, we're not going to be able to talk. Okay. Freely ye have received and freely give. So in the same manner in which we receive forgiveness, we must give forgiveness like i said that is we're giving we're taking the judgment away and we're giving it back to god saying you know what i choose to forgive i can give a lot of testimony of money about choosing to forgive in certain situations and how that has really really unlocked me uh, in my personal life in my personal walk with the lord um but for years it was a it was really boiled down to a choice i just had to choose to i surely didn't feel it and i had all the evidence in the world to, to not give to not give forgiveness. But that word is very, very, very clear. It says the same. If you don't forgive others for their trespasses, I won't forgive you. And that was that was one of the early on verses that I read. And I just wanted to, okay, I'm I guess I'm just dumb enough to believe everything that this word says. And I'll 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 take that to the grave with me. So all right. With that being said, does it are we clear on that right now? So we understand that forgiveness is the basis for all things. We've got to get these things out. Now, if there's something in your life that, you know, there's going to, we're not going to dig too far into this because this is a personal thing. This is something that you have to, you have to carve out time and you have to do the work. Sean's not going to do the work. Diane's not going to do the work. We're not doing the work. You have to do the work. Right. You have to get to a place and go, man, what is going on in my life? Well, why am I not hearing you? Why am I not, you know, whatever it may be, but you got to ask him the why. Don't it's not, yes, you can bring people around you to, to partner in prayer, right? Absolutely. It says where two or three are gathered, he shall be. But if you're going to come and ask me, hey, will you pray for me? I'm going to ask you, what are you praying for for yourself? What do you want me to partner with you about? Have you asked the Holy Spirit? Have you asked the Lord? What is going on? Where am I rebellious? Have you have you opened up your ears to listen for him to say, this is where I see you being rebellious, you know, to my ways, not Sean's ways, of course, the Lord's ways. But you have to ask him those things. And you have to be willing to do something with the report. And lots of times, let me tell you, I've been in situations many, many times when it's not good to hear, but I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that what he tells me is good for me. So if he's showing me or revealing something to me that needs to get cut out, it's that simple. I'm cutting it out because if he, if I feel like he has showed it to me, and, and this is so for uh, for me, for Sean personally, this is something that I, I kind of simplify it down to. I look at this and go, Lord, is this going to bring you glory? And is it going to edify me or somebody else? If it's a no, it's that simple. Cut it out. It's just that simple. Is speaking a word or reacting in a certain way going to bring you glory and edify that person or reveal the Jesus that lives in me to somebody else? Yes. Okay, cool. Then let's go with it. It's just that to me, it's just that simple. Now, of course, everything is not that simple. I understand that. But at any given juncture, how easy is it to really simplify things down really kind of clean off all the fluff and all the stuff that the world tries to make things so complex right jesus is not complex that's the problem is that we've gotten so religious about things instead of just sticking to relationship we've we've been we've been the martha instead of the mary right in in the scripture in the, in the gospels it talks about that jesus came into the town and and Martha was preparing everything, and her sister Mary just sat at Jesus' feet, and she just cleaned his feet with her hair. And just she just sat at his feet. And Martha says, "Well, Lord, why why don't you say something to her? She's not helping me." And and the Lord was just like, "This is where she's supposed to be." See that that's the problem is that we're so worried about doing the thing, doing the stuff, right? That we forget that the whole reason that He came was for relationship, 
And we've got to do whatever we can do to make sure that that relationship with him is pure. So if there's anything that is outside of that, anything that is disrupting that relationship, we have got to do what is, it is our responsibility to take care of that. And that's either cut it out, Lord, please forgive me, whatever it may be. And we're going to get into some of those tools in just a minute, but I didn't want to get too deep in that. I hope, I hope you guys understand that. All right. So the first thing is this, we've got to remove the obstacles. Okay. Removing the obstacles. Um, everyone who has received Jesus understands that he is the Lord of righteousness. That's Jehovah Shiskadu. In order to do that, we've got to do this. We, so we have to accept his calling, but first we must let go of the opposing mindsets. The things that are completely counter to what Jesus says in his word in his gospel. It's real simple. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind. Love your neighbor as yourself. If you, and it says all the law and the prophets hang on those two commandments. Right. If we will look at those two things and really focus on those, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind. Love your neighbor as yourself. Okay. Look at those things and move forward from there. Is there anything that is impeding that? Is there anything that is uh, being detrimental to me operating in those two simple things? Well, all right, Lord, where is it and what can I do about it? You know, it's that simple. Like I said, to accept this calling, we must let go of opposing mindsets. This is a trade-off experience. This is where we're going to get into an exchange a little bit, all right? And to receive eternity, we must be willing to remove obstacles that block his entry. So if you'll go to Revelations 3.20, um, it says this, and I'll read this out of the New King James. Revelations 3.20. And this is... Um, this is in red. This is Jesus talking about the lukewarm church. And it says this, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him and, and him with me. Okay. If he's knocking at your door and you're ignoring that knock, you're going to have a hard row to hope. It's going to be a hard life to continue to walk through. If he's knocking at your door and he wants to come in, he wants to dine with you. He wants to sup with you. He wants to, to really have this relationship with you. But we've got to be prepared to answer that call. All right. So how do we do that? This is going to be a process of removal. This is the this is pretty much the core. Uh, and, and of course, Diane can always kind of interject and cut me off if I'm, if I'm speaking out of turn here. But the core of SOZO are, are these four things. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'll probably try to type them in the chat, see if I can do that. We're going to look at identification, renunciation, forgiveness, and exchange. And we won't get into all of them tonight. We will, I'm going to kind of touch on them briefly. Um, and then this is something that you guys can all kind of look at doing on your own. You've got to really spend time in order to have a relationship with him. In order to do this stuff, you've got to spend time with him. I can't, I can't stress that enough. If you will take the time and really get alone, get to quiet places, you know, lots of people talk about being in their prayer closet or, or whatever that is, <laughs> just, just ask him, right. Ask him where, where's the best place for me to go. A lot of people will say, well, I talked to Lord while I'm driving down the road. I can promise you, you're not distracted if you're driving down the road. That is not a place of, of zero distraction. When you get to a place of zero distraction, it's I'm cutting out everything. And sometimes, you know, that's setting the phone down. That's all right. I'm going to take this time, whether it be early in the morning, wh whatever it may be, that's between you and the Lord. But whatever that place is, you'll understand and you'll feel safe there. You'll feel that this is a, a place where I can have conversation and communicate. That's also the place where you go and really let some, let your hair down, let some things go, you know, Hey, I, I'm not happy with this right now. And, and it's, and let me tell you, that's a safe place to go because that's, that's where you can go and say, look, I'm not happy with you right now, Lord. You guys hear me? Thank you. Okay. I'll have to fix that later. I think that someone was sharing a whiteboard. Anyway, um, 
So to receive God's truth, we must follow this process. So first, we've got to identify, right, where those where those things are, where those places of rebellion are. Um, I this is probably one of the best verses that I've found that I really rely on a lot, and I've mentioned it numerous times before. I'll put it in the chat. Um, it's Psalm one thirty nine, verse twenty three and twenty four. Um, there's a verse in Psalm Psalm 26 that kind of is similar to, and I will I will read this real quick. Psalm 139, 23 and 24 says this, and this is out of the New King James. It says, Search my heart, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my anxieties, and see if there is any wicked way in me, and lead me on the way of everlasting. Um, this is a verse that I try to live by daily. If I, I, I really try to approach him with this on, on a constant basis in my spirit, man, Hey, Lord, just show me if there's something that is rebellious to you. If there's something that I'm, I've partnered with something that I've done, uh, that I've said that is not pleasing to you. I need to know it because then I've got, then I have the responsibility to do something with it and I'm going to take it to you and I'm going to walk in a constant state of repentance to go. If the Holy spirit nudges me, and taps me on the shoulder and says, no, 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 don't do that. Don't act like that. Don't speak like that. Then I have the responsibility to take that back to him and go, Lord, please forgive me. Please forgive me for falling short today. Please forgive me for whatever that may be, whether it was a word said or something done out of, out of context or that was not um, giving him honor and glory. And then I have to be to a place, like I said last week, where you have to be ready to receive his forgiveness. What will you give me in exchange now that I've laid this down before you? All right. So part of it is, is the, so like I said, first is the identification. Ask him. All right. Where is that thing? What is it? Is it, maybe it's anger. Maybe it's uh, jealousy. Maybe it's, um, uh, you name it. Maybe it's, oh, let me, here's one. Gossip. Lying. Whatever it may be, but you got to ask him. And then you've got to renunciate. That's the second step, renunciating that thing. So once he's identified to you, now I'm renunciating. Lord, please forgive me for partnering with this lie that the enemy has told me that I should be okay talking about somebody else when I really don't know the whole story. Or uh, Lord, please forgive me for, for envying what they have because man, they just got this brand new truck or she just got this beautiful dress and I'm just so envious of her. I you know, and you think bad labor, whatever it may be, you know, but you have to go before the Lord and ask those things. Ask him, what is it? What is, what is rebellious to your ways? What is, what is it? And then at Lord, please forgive me. I'm going to break a contract with this. Please forgive me. That's the word. Please forgive me for, please forgive me for, whether it be a partnership or something that you've said, you know, talks about in, 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 Psalms and I can't remember, or Proverbs talks about life and death is in the power of the tongue. What words have you put out into the atmosphere? It's very, very important that you're conscious of what you're speaking. It's not necessarily what comes out of your mouth. It's what comes out of your heart, right? What, what, what's coming out of your heart? What, what, do you, what have you taken in so deep that you've you know harbored something that is now causing essentially word vomit to come out of your mouth onto other people? That's, that's not a good thing, right? And and let's face it, none of us are perfect. None of us will ever be perfect, not even close. So at the end of the day, th this is just a habit that I try to do is, all right, Lord, how'd I do today? If it wasn't too good, then I say, okay, what can I learn from today? I'll take that in and tomorrow, but I'm not going to beat myself up over it. And I surely am not going to let him beat me up over it because I know that you love me. You call me according to your purpose and you're going to use all things for your glory. So I'm not going to let this affect me. I'm not going to let this tear me down. And that's the thing. Lots of times things will really, the enemy wants to use whatever he can to tear you down. Because if you are driving towards the purpose of being a vessel for Christ to use, he's going to try to cut you down. He'll use whatever it takes, family, bad decisions, whatever, but you can't beat yourself about it. You have an opportunity in repentance. Take it to the Lord. That's the renunciation. Please forgive me for what I've said. Please forgive me for what I've done. Please forgive me for partnering with whatever this is, right? And it's it's often often some a lie that the enemy's shown us. But you have to really do the work. 
I can't, I can't stress that enough. You've got to do the work to ask him where that's at. And then listen, if it, if it becomes quite complex, there's more to this than that. It's not going to be just that simple. First, it's going to be trying to clear off the top layers, and then you're going to have to start getting down a little bit deeper. And then the depth of it, that's where it starts getting, uh, I'm trying to figure out the right word to use. I don't, it, interesting uh, could be a good word, um, but it could be um, painful. I, I will say that it, it can be very painful because lots of times root lies uh oftentimes get introduced at very early ages at a at a weakened point right uh lots of times as children we consider they're the weaker especially the child you know young three four whatever a lot of things get introduced to young children whether wherever it may come from but we understand that the lord has been with us the entire time from conception he's been there so we have to figure out where was the lie introduced where was that thing set up? Because it was set up as a, for a purpose. It was to, to thwart us from any growth in the kingdom, to, to thwart us from any doing anything good for the kingdom, to help advance the kingdom and grow the kingdom and have relationship with all three members of the Godhead. That was the purpose, was this to cut us off. It says in John 10.10, 10, it says the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Now, I've heard this, and I've taught this in many, many different ways before, but the one thing that I, I kind of go back to a lot and and I and Diane can probably back this up and it probably came out of some teachings that we had um, done together or studies that she had actually been a part of is that uh, he comes to steal your steal your faith, steal your joy, kill your faith, and the destroy actually means to sever, like cut off the bloodline. If he can destroy a person, then they can't procreate. Then there won't be a bloodline that continues. And that's the whole purpose is he doesn't want as, as parents for us to, to live for Christ, right? To have a relationship with Christ, to, to teach that to our children, to generations, to our grandchildren. He doesn't want that. Anything that he can do, one degree of separation from us and, and the Lord, he, that's his goal. If he can get us off course just a little bit, over time, that's going to con completely drift off, right? But it's our opportunity. It's our responsibility to go, okay, maybe you got off a little bit today, but at the end of the day, I'm going to go, okay, Lord, I need to get back in line with you. What is it that has caused me to draw off? All right, Lord, please forgive me. Now I'm back in alignment. And as you continue to do that, as you continue to dig, the Lord's going to show you things. The Holy Spirit's going to reveal things to you. And then you, like I said, you have to do something with it. If you don't know what to do with it, then start asking questions, okay? The last uh, the last step, oh, then there's forgiveness, okay? So if it's something that you, uh, lots of times, like we've talked about many times in the past, the forgiveness sometimes is the hardest one is looking yourself in the mirror and saying, I choose to forgive you. I'm not making excuses, but I choose to forgive you. You have to be willing to forgive yourself for a lot of things that we do. Guilt, shame, condemnation, regret, all of those things. None of those things bring you or God edification. None of them. So don't partner with them. That's where we kind of go back and go, okay, I've got some guilt in my life and I've got some shame. Okay, so you screwed up. Welcome to the club. Because guess what? We all have. We've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God continually. And if you don't think you're not going to do in the, for in the, in the future, that's where you need that i need that jason button ain't gonna happen we're all gonna do that but you have to look at it and go okay is this um is this me just tripping and falling is this just sin or is this me practicing sin if we get into that that's that's a little bit deeper do you know it's right or do you know it's wrong and you still choose to do it you, you might have to do a little bit more digging. You might have to do a little more graveling. You might have to go before the Lord and say, all right, Lord, I need, to, I need an extra dose of forgiveness today because I chose to do this and even knowing it was wrong, all right? And let, let's face it, we've all been that place. We've all been to where we've, we know it's wrong and still choose to do it. It's just, that's just the fleshly nature in us, right? It, it, it just is. So 
But like I said, we have that opportunity. We can go back to the Lord and say, Lord, please forgive me for this and help me to be stronger tomorrow. Help me to, to fight back against this tomorrow and, and be a better vessel for you to use. All right. Forgiveness is pretty simple. I mean, it's not simple, but, but the concept is simple. And the last one is this, is exchange. Um, the exchange is this. I'm going to give you an analogy. This is the analogy that I use quite often, and hopefully people won't get grossed out by it. But essentially, exchange is this. If I walk around and I've got stuff in my pockets, I've got good things in my pockets, and I've got bad things in my pockets. If I'm walking around, i got a pocket full of change, but in my other pocket... I got change, I got cash, and I got deer turds. Well, eventually things are going to start stinking. And at some point I have to recognize that I've got something in my pocket that was never intended for me. I've got rubies and gems in one pocket, but the other pocket I got a bunch of turds. And it's stinking. The exchange is this. Once I've been identified and I know, hey, there's something there that doesn't need to be there, right? It may be a lot of them. Well, I go and I lay that before the Lord and say, Lord, Please forgive me for partnering with this deer turd because I did not need this in my pocket. I'd be walking around stinking. I ain't drawing nobody to me. Nobody's coming to around me because I stink because I got this stuff going on. Sin is that, that stinky sin, right? We lay down now enough before the Lord. But now once I've laid it down, I ask for his forgiveness. Well, it says that he forgives me. He says my sin is as far as the east is from the west. Simple, right? But now I have an empty place. And scripture is really clear about when it, when the enemy is removed from the house, he says, when it's swept clean, he says that he goes away for a season. If somebody will find me and find that verse, I'm not sure where it is. If just Google it and I'll, I'll read it out of the King James because it's rarely important to read that. It says that he goes away for a season, but then he comes back and he checks inside the windows. And he's like, Hey, that thing's still cleaned out. If it is, he says that he'll bring seven more of his friends, which would, and he said it would be worse than it was before. I know lots of people, lots of people that I've been around and been friends with. This has happened to in the, the second and the third and the fourth time around. It's very difficult. It's very difficult to get more and more of those out of the house, that house essentially being this vessel, right? So we have to do this. This is the important part. And I don't think that is talked about ever enough is that when you lay things down, when you repent of things and you receive forgiveness freely, right? Do you ask the Lord, what will you give me in exchange? Well, I, I took something, whether it be hatred, anger, resentment, whatever it may be, right? I took that. But now I understand because I've grown and I understand that this was not good. This was only meant to bring me harm. And this was a lie that the enemy sold me. It's like getting a lemon, right? You're going to take it back 30, within 30 days. <laughs> the lemon law, let's take it back. Well, it's kind of like that in the spirit realm. Hey, I got this thing. I wrote this contract and I bought this lemon. Man, this is, it, it don't work. I want to take it back. So I don't even know where that came from. The lemon law, the <laughs> spirit, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> this is where I am saying. So we actually, we got to bring it back for an exchange and say, okay, Lord, I'm giving this back to you because this is not what you intended for me to have from the beginning. What will you give me in exchange? And this is the key part. You have to listen. He may speak something to you. You may feel something. He may show you something, smell something, whatever it may be. But you have to be in a place where you can receive to hear what he has to say, to listen to what he has to say. Listening is not waiting for your turn to talk. You have to be an active listener and to say, okay, what is it that you want to, what will you give me in exchange, Lord? I'll give you an example. Um, years ago, I had, um, when I had my Sozo, uh, Sozo experience, my Sozo meeting up at, up in Hamilton at the ramp, there was um, some things that I had laid down. There's some things that the Holy Spirit revealed to me that I was able to asked the Lord for forgiveness for, and he, he gave me great things. I mean, he showed me many, many different things, things that he was, um, uh, giving me in exchange. And one of the things that he gave me in exchange was when I gave up something that was, I thought was good. And I gave it back to him. Um, there is a tool that we use in marriage counseling. It's looks, it's a triangle, right? Um, 
And at the top of this triangle is God. And at each corner is you and your spouse. And this could be for any relationship. And if you look at a triangle, if I'm on one side and my spouse is on the other, and I make sure that I put God first, as, as I put him first I, and I get closer to him in proximity, I'll actually be closer to my wife. So the one thing that the Lord showed me and he gave me an exchange for laying something down was I was getting, I was, I was at a place and I don't think that you ever get to the pinnacle, right? You never get to the top because you, you have to make sure that you um, navigate the hills and valleys. But there was at a point where I was, I was, I was close enough that I could reach across the other side of that triangle and grab my wife by the hand because we were both putting the Lord first. We were both seeking the Lord, Lord fervently. And still do, but putting the Lord first, but I was close enough to grab a hold of her. And he showed me in my spirit, man, he showed me him grabbing a hold of her hand. And when he did that, I was not letting go. And he took a red sash and he wrapped it around our hands. Red, of course, meaning I took it as he was applying the blood to that. He was applying the blood to that covenant that we have in marriage. And I've never, never forgotten that. Not one day. Now there's been days, I promise you that I've slipped and probably slid halfway down that that triangle down that, you know, looking like a pyramid and she's going, where are you going? You know? And, and the same goes probably for her. And it has to be that, that give and take. I think that's the powerful part about marriage is that when you will both put, put the Lord first, put God first in your life, you will grow closer to your spouse. I promise you. Down shadow of a doubt. I'm, I'm living proof of it. I'm living proof of it because I didn't do it for two marriages and they both failed. So I finally figured it out. I guess I, I am. I do have a little bit of intelligence up there. Finally figured it out. Third time the charm, I guess. So, last thing is this: these four steps that I just talked about, right? Identification, renunciation, forgiveness, and exchange. These steps help identify the enemy's fingerprints, and it works to replace them with God's truth. That's the, that's the thing that we need to, need to figure out. It's essentially, if you look at it like this, you know how those those CSI shows and stuff where they do the fingerprint, like dust in for fingerprints. That's the Lord. When you go ask him and say, Hey, where let, let's get some, let's pull some fingerprints here. Where is he? Where has he been around here touching things? I want the Lord to do that little, get that little, you know, little, what do you call that thing? I don't know. You like dust in for fingerprints and he gets a little, little powder and he gets around there and dust for fingerprints. Show me where he's been touching me. Show me in spots in my life where he's had his hand on me, whether it be a choke grip or whether it just be his fingerprint. But I want to find all those things. And I want to find, and I want the Lord to say, you know what? In all those places, I give them back to you. And I want your blood applied to those places because the blood is what sets you free. The blood is what gets you to a place where now I can operate in freedom and I can walk in that. But this is something that you continually do day after day after day. It's not something that's just one time and done. Diane talked about that last week. One of her great, great mentors. A, oh my goodness. A mighty, mighty woman of God. She has says those done all the time. And if you understand and really grow in this concept, you can do it daily, weekly, however you need it. I, I, I've studied in this for so long and it really just applied it as a lifestyle to my life. If I feel like something's going awry, mm -hmm. I'm going to find my closet. And I and I can assure you that there's been times when my wife and I both, we were finding out things are going on, separate closets, right in the corners. All right, Lord, got to show us. There's times when we've gone into the same closet together. All right, Lord, show us together. And he'll, re, he'll bring revelation to those things. So I have been talking much longer than I thought I was going to go. So I apologize for that. Um, I've, if there's any questions that we have concerning forgiveness or um, those four steps that I talked about, identification, renunciation, forgiveness, and exchange, please let's let's talk about those so we can get that lined out uh, and go from there. If this is something that you've got pretty pretty well figured out, then uh, we'll 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 kind of step into the next subject. Um, next week is going to be shifting atmospheres but we don't want to move into that until we get this nailed down all right so i'm going to oh shannon shared with me matthew 12 43 to 45 and this is where it talks about what 
what translation was that? King James? Okay, it's in the King James. And I was talking about the house being swept clean, right? He says, when verse 43, when the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh dr through dry places, seeking rest and findeth none. Then he, then he saith, I will return into my house from whence I came out. And when he is come, he findeth it empty, swept and garnished. Then he goeth and taketh with himself seven other spirits more wicked than himself. And they enter the, and dwell there. And the last state of the man is worse than the first. Even so shall it be also into this wicked generation. So I think that's kind of clear. Make sure that's the exchange part, right? So when the Lord identifies something and you give it back to him, right? Please forgive me for this. You're essentially cutting off. You're allowing him to trim the branches that are not producing good fruit in you and throw it in the fire. Don't go get it back out. You're just going to get burnt. It's that simple. When that happens, once the house is swept clean, make sure you ask him, well, will you give me an exchange? And you make sure you fill that house with the Lord. Worship. Praise, all those things. Fill it with people who lift you up and edify you and grow together. And let me tell you, some you're, you're going to find out that there may be some people that you just need to cut out, but that's between you and the Lord. That's not for me to tell you who to cut out. That's between you and the Lord. Yep. Sometimes it might be family for, for a distance. Love them from a distance. Yep. All right. <laughs> all right. Any questions? I'm going to go silent. All right, don't everybody speak at once now. Billy, how you doing? I'm loving that beard. I can tell you that much. Looking like Crowder up in there. <laughs> doing great. Doing on, oh, hang on, we got food coming in. That's right. Uh, we're doing doing great. Uh, we kind of been in the hospital here lately. Uh, mom found a mass in her uh, right lung and we're uh trying to get everything figured out we got a biopsy tomorrow and, uh figure out what it is and uh just really praying and getting much needed word <laughs> yeah yeah so you're in dothan you're there with her right now yes sir yeah. uh, hello mama Hello, how are you? Hey, I've been better, but we'll we get there. Yes, ma'am. Have an extra chair for you. She can grab another chair. Well, I know you. I know you got food that just showed up, so I don't want to keep you from food. But if you don't mind, let's let's uh, come in together and pray for you for for this situation right now, if you don't mind. Absolutely. All right, Lord, we just thank you for this time. We thank you for this opportunity to be with with Kayla and Billy and Billy's mom here in this hospital, Lord, we know that you are the, the great physician. We know that you are the one that orders and dictates these things, Lord, that you can send your ministering angels right now. We ask for a dispatch order to come from the heavenly realms and send your ministering angels to this room in Northland right now. Lord, we just speak to, to, to mass, Liz, Lord, that masses that weren't created by you, Lord, but, but, enemy masses that are trying to impede her lungs lord we pray right now that it be your breath that breathes into her lungs lord your breath that gave life to the to the dry bones in the valley lord we pray right now that you would that you would breathe into her lungs and that she would intake your breath lord and that that breath in itself would permeate throughout her entire body ministering healing right now and lord we just give you praise and honor and glory on credit for what you're going to do and what you're doing right now, Lord. And we to thank you and ask you that you would give both her and Billy and Kayla peace about all this. Lord, that a peace that passes all understanding that knows that they know beyond a shadow of a doubt that you are in the middle of all this, that nothing that you, that nothing happens, it takes you by surprise. But Lord, we just give you praise and honor and glory for this and speak healing over her right now. And we plead the blood over this entire family. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so Absolutely. much. Absolutely. Absolutely. We'll continue to keep you in prayers and please let us know whether it be through Melissa or whatever. And if there's Absolutely. anything that we can do to help for sure. Absolutely. Thank have, you. Bless your food. Have a wonderful meal, but we're, we'll stay on. Keep listening. <laughs> All right. Who else? Let's 
Yes. Look at Dustin. You know when Dustin turns his camera on, he got something to say. <laughs> he was chomping at the bit earlier. I've been waiting on this uh, this lesson. Um, Are you going to give me a grade report? Oh, oh no. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm just soaking it in, bro. Um, you know, you were talking about four different things in, in tonight's lesson. And as you were talking about relationship and you kept, kept talking about how to, to build a relationship, I have to, it's just Dustin, but I learn from experiences. It's, it's not just, you might can tell me and, 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 you know, I can learn enough from that that I feel like I might can get by but when I'm hands-on and I can learn hands-on then that's it's an entirely different brand new experience uh, for me so when when you're talking about relationship I could not help but think about me and my wife's relationship you know we've been we've been married now almost uh August will be 21 years but I, f I feel like so many times we have a we have an encounter or something like that, and we come to Jesus, and what we have first is an infatuation. Because I seen Heather from afar, and I thought, "Wow, she's she's kind of cute." You know, I think I, I think I would like to spend some time with this young lady. And the more I was around her, the more I began to learn about her, and and obviously, the more she learned about me. But in this relationship, we finally had to get to a point where we had to have hard conversations. In building a relationship, there comes a point in time where there has to be hard conversations. And if we're not willing to have those hard conversations and talk about the hard stuff, then we never become any more than just an acquaintance. You see, when we find ourselves past the infatuation point of uh, it, being just infatuated with Jesus because it was a new high or, or something like that, when we spend time in his word and we begin to learn his heart and we have those, relation, those relationships, those, those hard conversations, and he begins to show us who he is and he shows us who we are, then when we see those things for what they really are then we like i said this is dustin i found myself being vulnerable i don't like exposing myself in those those hard places because it, it leaves me at a okay what now you know this you really see me for me what now and then we're expecting some kind of uh of of, of feedback from that, whether whether good or, or bad. And, and listen, there's been plenty of hard conversations that Heather and I have had, and it's been like, ha, ah, please don't turn that knife. And it, it's not that she means to hurt me, but what she's trying to do is to say, if we're going to come together and be, and be the couple that God intended us to be, then there's got, there's got to be some work changed. There, there's got to be some work done right here. And it's not just about me, it's about us. And and I'm not saying that it's not it's it's a me and God thing. He's done his part, he's waiting on us to do ours. And when we come to the table and we're vulnerable and I say, Okay, okay, God, uh, I, I believe you shared Sean and, and I was texting you earlier today and, and you said, Search me, oh Lord. When we pray that prayer, we really ought to be careful. Because when he goes, now, now sometimes in my life when God says, this is what I want you to work on, I'm really not surprised because when I look in that mirror and I see Dustin for who he is at times, I don't like it. I don't, I don't like it at all. But when I work on those things, that relationship with God grows grows stronger. That I, 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 My wording may be off, but th those cords are not easily broken. I remember where I come from. I know where I am, and I'll surely not go back there. I don't like the chains. I don't like the bondage. Uh, and another thing that I, I thought about, too, 
when you when you talk about forgiveness, so many times in my own personal life, I didn't see a need to forgive somebody. Even in my relationship with God, I didn't feel like there was a need to forgive them because I was so focused on my justification. I was so justified, so blinded by me being right where I am that I didn't need or didn't see a need to forgive someone. In that, I found freedom when I come to the place and I said, okay, God, I can't do this anymore. And you know, in my, <laughs> in my encounter, some of you guys know, but when I was finally able to look at myself in the mirror and say, God loves you regardless, in spite of you, <laughs> wow. Hmm. Amen. It's often difficult to have a hard conversation. And the, the, the important part is, is that when you are prepared to have that hard conversation, you're willing to step to that table. That's why it's important to say, okay, Lord, where is the safe place? Where is the, the place that I can come to that and, and reveal to me, you know, lots of times when we'll come to the Lord and, and ask these things, we have to ask the Holy Spirit, where is where is my skewed view? Because the forgiveness comes from the Lord, right? It comes from Jesus. Now, is there some seed back there that that keeps me from G seeing Jesus in the in in His true form? Do I have something against that type? You know, do I feel like He's failed me somewhere because somebody? You know, yeah, that's where the conversation comes in. And like Dustin said, when you're willing to have that, and you step to the step to the plate, and you you step up to the table and say, okay, all right. This is going to hurt a little bit, but significant growth from that. Absolutely. Be able to look at himself in the mirror again. Anybody else? Yeah, Billy said the hardest person to ever forgive is myself. Yep, it is. It is. But I'll tell you something, Billy. Uh, I think lots of times people who are willing to unforgive them that, that, that are unwilling or, or have the hardest time forgiving themselves is because of the lie that the enemy sold them that they failed and they're not worthy here's the thing you are not worthy because somebody said you're worthy you're worthy because he says you're worthy you're worthy because he sent his son to die on the cross for you that's that's a pretty good investment so if he says you're worthy and he says you're forgiven if you can't look at yourself in the mirror and say, okay, I accept that. I've got to, I've got to accept that. I've got to move on and I've got to walk in kindness and, and really don't beat myself up over it because that's all the enemies want to do is watch you beat yourself up. So cut off his, cut off his, uh, cut off his avenues. Go ahead. So sorry. I didn't mean to. So Ditto. You covered 98% of the exact same thing that I was just fixing to say. And, and, and to add kind of to that, Sean, you hit on when you talk about, when you talk about forgiveness, sometimes it means love from afar. And sometimes the person that you have to forgive is somebody very close to you. Somebody that was a mentor, somebody you looked up to and somebody that caused the problem. And forgiving them, like you said, doesn't mean forget, but at the same time, it doesn't mean that you have to run to them with open arms either. And you, some of you guys were there at my encounter to kind of experience that with me. And when you let go of it, it's amazing at what comes of it. Because if you think that the Holy Spirit doesn't work, even on people who are not strong in the faith and not believers, you are incredibly naive because 
when you do that and when you have that total forgiveness and, and start moving forward, I think that most people that know me would say that there's been a very big change in me. I mean, Sean definitely could would tell you that there's that I've had a very big change. And when you totally get that and you let go of it and you say, okay, now help me to understand what I need to do, how I need to do it, what when you get to that place. It's amazing that this little thing right here that we carry around will start ringing in. Or you'll start getting text messages and people will start saying, hey, how are you? Are you okay? And it gives you the opportunity to share with them what you've experienced and to start rebuilding that bridge. And the day will come when you can talk to them about that problem, but it doesn't have to be immediate. And when you forgive and you start moving forward in that forgiveness, to work on them and that's when the real healing starts and that like we talked about last week being delivered from that monkey that you're dragging around so forgiveness is the step and when you make that step of forgiveness truly get into that and lay it down Man, it gets so good. So, ditto, Dustin. I agree. Thank you, brother. As normal, very word wise from the wisdom. <laughs> yep, forgiveness is that big master key. Big master key for sure. Anybody else? Uh, Sean, can I say one more thing? Of course. Um, and, and I would say this, correct me if I'm wrong, but we talk about so many times um, it being a work. You know, we as, as Christians, we are farmers. We plant the seed and he gives the increase and, and stuff like that. But as we were talking about unforgiveness and stuff, it almost seems as to, to me now no, I, I'll say I, I feel like this is Dustinology 101. Okay, so let me preface all this with with that. It almost seems like unforgiveness is a seed that comes in. Now, we may be justified or may feel justified in our unforgiveness, but there's a seed planted somewhere. And when we see that unforgiveness and we see that justification for that unforgiveness, then it's like a seed that we don't necessarily know maybe at the time that it needs to be plucked out, but the enemy comes along and he just waters it just a little bit. And that justification grows. And then he comes along and he sends somebody else and we talk about it. We think about it. We contemplate on it. And, and the more our justification begins to grow is to, and, and sometimes even for me, that justification, even to, even might turn into hatred. I don't know about you, but when that thing has grown into a massive tree or a massive vine, cutting down a tree is not a small task. It's something that we must work at. Now, I do agree that, that God sometimes when he comes in and we make that choice and we say, okay, here it is, boom, it's yours. God levels that thing and it it's it's gone god completely takes that away from us but i also believe that the enemy will come back sometimes and he will he'll, he'll try to throw that seed back out there it, it it's like a a tree that's been maybe not uprooted but has been you're trying to kill the roots after that tree has been honed down it takes some work because you gotta take the limbs off that tree 
you've got to cut that tree up and and not that we would keep it around to use it for firewood by any means but it's almost to me like i said dustinology 101 it's it's like that firewood there once we set it ablaze it's a blaze that we can show others that that god can use uh to show others that this is what happened. This is the justification. But look what God's done through that. Did that? Did any of that make any sense at all? One hundred percent, absolutely. So if you look at it, right? So the, from that seed concept, right? It talks about how we're, the seed is constantly being spread. We're supposed to go around and spread the seed, right? Well, everything that is in the king, everything that is in the kingdom. The enemy of darkness has the exact opposite. It just, it's the same. It's just a counterfeit. He's just send, he's just spreading the bad seed. And like I said, what what seed is your soil accepting? If you're if you're in a place where you know gossip and and and, and uh, envy and and greed and strife and anger and and pride and all that, if that's the soil that you have operating, then you're going to accept those seeds. And you're going to let them keep watering and you're going to, guess what? You're going to surround yourself with people that'll keep feeding it. It'll keep feeding um, it. Go ahead, Sheila. I'm sorry. One thing I thought of when Dustin was talking about the seed being planted, um, it came to my mind and I, I, I feel like even us as parents and grandparents, you know, when our children are young, and they come home saying, well, this happened or somebody said this about me and, you know, they're angry instead of teaching them forgiveness and trying to help the situation. And I'm, I'm not talking about bullying and stuff like that. OK, so just bypass that mess. But instead of teaching our kids to forgive, we water that seed that Dustin is talking about and, you know, lashing back at that person that may be done our child or grandchild wrong and you know when they grow into adults they have problems with forgiving because us as parents and grandparents we have helped water that seed if that makes any sense and I've been there because of my own grandchildren somebody say something negative to them and I'm ready to tear somebody's head off I'm not teaching my grandkids to forgive I'm teaching them to lash back. And that's something that us as parents and grandparents need to instill in our, our children and our grandchildren is teach them. And they need to see that in us as adults also in forgiving, forgiving others, even when it's hard for us to forgive, show them, train them the right thing to do. That's all I had to say. That's it. A to the M to the E to the N, both of y'all, mom and son, I've been here preaching tonight. Man, what y'all just covered in about eight minutes is a whole lot of nuggets of wisdom. That is super powerful. Thank you, Sheila. That is, you are 100% correct that if we don't recognize as parents, as grandparents, as moms and dads, those things and start teaching our kids a different way because it's been perpetuated for generations, then we're just continuing the problem. Right. And, and how, okay. So I wasn't planning on going here, but I will real quick, just to kind of put it out there in the spirit realm, the three members of the Godhead kind of resemble three different beings, right? Father God being, that's your father. So if you have essentially a problem with a father figure in your life, you're in the spirit, you're going to kind of see Father God like that. Like he's failed you or he, you know, you're going to be scared of him or whatever. Father God is not one to be scared of. Yes, you're supposed to have a reverent fear, but that's a fear that you don't want to be away from him. Not that he's, I mean, it's not just, oh my gosh, I, you know, you're, you're afraid of it, like afraid of him like that. So that's one thing. Uh, Jesus is a friend and a mediator. If you've had an issue with um, relationships at that at that lateral level, right? Lots of times in in the spirit realm, you'll see Jesus at the same way. Like I can't bring this to Jesus because man, this friend betrayed me. That's one of those things. The Holy Spirit is being 
uh, kind of resembles one like the mother. She's the nurturer, right? And the Holy Spirit is one that kind of gives a lot of things. And if you have a problem with a mother or that type of female figure in your life, because like Sheila, like you said, you know, your kids come home and, and you, and we just pour on top of the problems that they're having. We perpetuate the problem instead of looking at it and then analyzing it and going, well, what happened here? Let's talk about this. Let's sit down and let's talk about this. Let's, let's put this thing down. I don't need to get on Facebook right now. Let's sit down and let's discuss this. What happened? What, what are the particulars? You know, can we, can we, can we come to a place of forgiveness? Cause like J Dustin said, I can promise you nowhere, nowhere in this book will, will God show you that he'll justify your sin. Nowhere. Justification will never come for that. He won't justify you being angry about anything. He says, be angry and sin not. So if you're looking for justification for that, and Dustin, like you said, that seed, absolutely. Unforgiveness is going to come, and then it's going to be like, okay, it's set in. Well, now, oh, you, man, don't you don't have to forgive them. You know what they did to you? Man, you, you know what she did? Oh, man, he's been running around on you for years. There ain't no reason to forgive him. You know what I mean? Look at what he said to you. And that's going to be that thing. That's the thing that keeps coming in our ear. That's where we've got to come before the Lord and say, hey, where's that? I got, I got to renunciate this. I'm not I'm not taking this no more. So thank you both. You guys absolutely nailed it. Nailed it. Who's next? I want to add something really quick. Well, maybe, maybe not really quick, but kind of quick. So I like your term, Dustinology 101, Dustin. So in your Dustinology right there where you just talked about, it, 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 it just really, really resonated with me and clicked hard because you apply it to your everyday life. So you talked about planting a seed and how we're like farmers and we plant the seed and we sow the seed. So if you know anything about farming and breaking and trying to get a crop to grow, you know about a, what they call a seed bank. And if you've got a yard that you take care of, you understand this too. So in the dirt, we have what's called a seed bank. And it is full of seeds. Well, when you break that ground up, say we're going to grow grass. There's seed, you can have barren dirt that's there. But the pH is wrong. And the acid density is, and millions of things are wrong with that. So you do test and you get the soil where it needs to be to habitat life. We have to read from the scripture to get our heart right to habitat with the Lord. And in seed bank, when you spread your grass seed this year and you fertilize it, grass grows. And then everybody says, man, that could be good. Look at all these weeds that I've got. Well, that's the exact same as the devil. Those seeds are always there. That seed bank is there. He's just waiting for the right time for all the environment to get right, to fertilize it and let all the weeds grow. But how we counteract the weeds is we continue to manicure the grass, to fertilize the grass, and we continue to put herbicide on the weeds. And eventually... When you put enough herbicide on the weed, there is no more seeds in the seed bank other than the seeds that you're sowing. The seeds that you're putting out that you want to grow. Amazing, man. To put that, to bring that into concept of Everyday life. Man, I raise cows. I've got hay pastures. And Sean, what you said is exactly right, that it only takes a little bit for the devil to pull those seeds and it grows into a tree. We've got to do. We've got to sow that seed bed and continue to put out the good seeds. And continue to live for righteousness in the eyes of the Lord and not allow the devil, 
who when we've at at a time of like what I'm in right now experiencing that I man I'm not letting the devil them seeds ain't growing because I'm trying to surround myself with strong-minded people in the spirit and trying to pull from scripture to have an understanding of everything that's happening and man just take care of the seed bank that's all we got to do that's that's another aha moment for me thanks dustin so we have dustinology and we have pharmology 101 provided to you each and every week on tuesdays on the inner circle bible study go ahead craig um this is mary this time um if you would go back and tell me those four four words in the process yes they're um, in the chat they're in the chat but I'll, I'll give them to you real quick they are identification renunciation forgiveness and exchange okay so um <laughs> I, I've done this many, many, many times, this whole process over many areas of my life. Every time the Lord, every time a situation comes up, you can apply this. It doesn't, it doesn't even really matter what the situation is or what it doesn't matter because these things apply. And so last week and see, sometimes it's going on now kind of God is being covert with me kind of you know and you don't know until the end what all happened um but anyway so last week I saw a behavior in someone else that um I'll say rubbed me the wrong way it just it it rubbed me the wrong way and so I didn't really do anything about it then, but then today, God revealed that behavior in me. And so that's the identification part is I'm saying, okay. And so uh, it was brought to my attention by somebody in authority over me at work It's brought to my, you know, <laughs> they're like, hey. And so anyways, at that point, the first thing that you want to do when it's coming back at you is get offended. When somebody tells you, hey, your behavior is not nice or whatever. I'm just putting it mildly. I don't want to get into any details, but because um, it wasn't like, you know, it wasn't like I did anything on purpose to hurt somebody's feelings or anything, but it was inappropriate for the circumstance. I'll just put it that way. Now, and I didn't even see it at the time until afterwards but anyway um so the first thing I want to do is you know my flesh rises up and I want to explain myself and my position and all of this and so immediately I heard the Holy Spirit say yes ma'am in other words I'm supposed to tell this person yes ma'am don't don't defend myself or my position because really I was in the wrong, but at the time you don't see that, you know, so I looked at her and I said, yes, ma'am, very calm. And she was ready for some, she was ready for the opposition to come out back. You know, she's ready for that. But I looked at her and I said, yes, ma'am. And in her shock, she repeated herself. And I looked at her and I said, I, I said, yes, ma'am, I'm going to comply. And uh, anyway, so then everything went back to normal. And of course, um, after I deliver mail. So when I got out on the route, I said, Craig, I called Craig and I, and I said, Craig, um, I, I just need to pray for, I just need some prayer right now because I'm, I'm upset, but I know I shouldn't be. It's, I don't have the, I really don't have a standing because with this person, I want them to be open with me. I've already told them. Just tell me what you expect or what you require of me and I'll comply that just be open. And 
I like people to be straight with me. So I can't be offended by that. And I said, I shouldn't be offended. And so Craig prayed over, prayed with me. And um, anyway, so, so I go back to work. And basically that is the renunciation of my behavior, if you will. That that took place in that. And and it didn't exactly go in that order because actually the forgiveness came last. <laughs> but um, I said, okay, Lord. Um, I knew the burden had been lifted. Maybe I forgave her and didn't realize it. But anyways, um, forgave myself even really. Um, and so once that happened, I said, okay, Lord, what would you like to put in my, put in my spirit? Cause that's, we, I don't want that in there and I don't want to leave it vacant for me to keep going over it all day long. And he said, I'm going to teach you how to pray better which was pretty flipping awesome. The teaching he gave me on intercessory prayer, I was listening to uh, the book uh, by Dutch Sheets, Intercessory Prayer. And it, that is awesome. It's not a very long book, but it's just, it is full of nuggets. So anyway, uh, after, after I was listening to that for a little while, then I began to, in the spirit, ask forgiveness of the people that I had uh, ever, you know, well, recently, if I have behaved like that towards people, not really realizing I was doing that, um, talking out of turn or uh, being um, too forward or whatever, you know, that they would be offended by, but they were just trying to be nice and didn't say anything back. You know, they just let it ride, if you will. So anyway, so for me, that's how this teaching applies to my life. I like, I really like, I feel like I understand it better when I've had that experience. I've, I've walked through it, but um, goodness, I need to write the words down. Do the words one more time for me. I'll, I'll text I'll text them to you Mary thank you identification renunciation forgiveness and exchange uh, exchange yep. very good that's it Craig, Craig was helping me yep. so but anyway and like, and like you and like you said yeah so so the the practical application of that it, it, it becomes it, it becomes easier like when you do those things right and and that's when you start really gaining some growth is when you actually put things put your word where you're, you know Put your money where your mouth is, like they used to say, but actually you'll put your word and in, in those things into action. So yeah, absolutely. That's good. That's good. Hopefully I didn't cut her off. I thought she was, I thought, I thought she was done. Anybody else? I, I was finished. Thank you. Oh, okay. <laughs> I think there was a delay on my end. I was like, I think she's done. I'm going to try to. Okay. Who else? Anybody else got anything? Shannon, Shannon did, but I think I cut him off a while ago. <clears throat> Sorry, Shannon. Had his hand up. I saw him. Sorry. He's waiting. No, no, no. I go ahead. I'm I'm getting texts for a prayer request from a couple of people that I'm gonna bring back. So I'm over here reading different texts, and it's amazing that they're reaching out now while we're all online. So y'all keep it going, and I'm gonna send you all the requests, Sean, so you'll know what we got going on. Well, I want to touch on the importance. First of all, in this country, we really haven't learned what forgiveness really is. There's a lot of misconception and there's terrible, there's, there's terrible teaching about forgiveness. It's easier to let the water run off the duck's back than it is to actually have an action. <clears throat> uh, if I would, if I was to ever write a book, I, it would be titled how I'm sorry ruined forgiveness in America because I'm sorry. doesn't have to say anything about I, I release you in forgiveness because we're called to actually release people the same way Jesus released us. 
And that's really when you get down to the that as the brass tack for the forgiveness, then you can step into the exchange portion because you can't outgive Jesus. So that's why there's an exchange. He always has something bigger because he's bigger. So we might as well get to that point and realize it it benefits us. <clears throat> Forgiveness is one of the only things we can do selfishly and be blessed. So not to stick just with forgiveness, but the, the exchange part of it, anything that you've ever received from heaven, it's, it's up to you to give back in exchange or to give away. And, and that's kingdom economics. You'll never go broke by giving everything the Lord gave you away you'll only end up with more. So learning the system and Sozo is so important in, in this, in, in living the word, instead of just knowing the word or trying to, you know, I think we, I think we try to do lessons a whole lot because I'm going to learn enough to exercise like Jesus but if we just if we get in a mode of just learning and not exercising, then we're fooling ourselves because we'll never achieve it from our brain. We have to achieve it and in, in doing it. And that makes all the difference in the world. We do it in the spirit first and foremost, and, but exercising day in and day out. Let me do it like Jesus did. He was the perfect example. And you'll find every one of the, Jesus will walk you right through all of the four that Sean brought up tonight. It's amazing how he works. He just takes us one step at a time and, and he just, he's the perfect teacher in all things he does in perfection. So the more we actually deal with him directly, the more we learn from him the more we're actually exercising and operating. And that's really where the power sits. And I'll leave it there. I, I want to, I want to say one more thing too. Um, Sozo back when Craig and I were going to the classes made such a huge impact on my life. And I don't necessarily go back and relive some of those experiences unless God asked me to for, for testimony purposes to let someone know that, um, they, that this, the same is available for them. Um, and sometimes I feel like when I give my testimonies now, like today, to me, it kind of, and I know what a, a lot of people on here are going through is big stuff. It's really big stuff. Even, even in my, my heart, I know it's big stuff. But, um, but Sozo works on the macro things, the big things, and the little things. But once you've gotten, once you've dealt with those big things, we do have to learn to let them fade into our history and walk into new things and as we walk into new things we're going to face other things they're going to come up and if and we will we will have tools at that point to deal with them in the present when they're small instead of you know letting a splinter get under your skin and infected and and causing a problem down the line well, by, by practicing it now, even, you know, with the big or small things, but usually it's the big stuff we want to address, you know, the, the pressing things. But like I said, when you get down the road, you'll have a tool that you can carry with you and use it today, right now. And so that, like, I don't really, I, after that happened today, all that stress and oppression and angst faded. It faded. And so it, it's not that I have to come home and 
you know, I don't want to bring that stuff to my house because I love Craig and I want to have a peaceful house. So, and, and this is, this is our, this is our peace. This is our sanctuary away from the world to be in the space together. So, um, anyways, I just wanted to say that it, this works for big things and little things, and it's a tool that you can use for the rest of your life as things come up. Yes. Amen. Amen. Um, I want to interject here real quick. Is that okay, Shannon? Okay. Um, I want to interject real quick and I, if everyone will kind of come together in this. So Melissa had to jump off. Um, she has a single mom. She has a mom in, from her single mother's group at church that she, she's talked about it before. She has 50 or 60 single moms involved in that group, but she has a mom that right now is trying to commit suicide. So we're going to come together in this right now. Lord, we just declare right now that the lie of uh, that, that has been spoken to this single mom, Lord, that you would reveal that lie, that ending her life is the answer. Lord, that wherever that lie was introduced, Lord, we just pray right now that you would reveal that, Lord, and that you would give her, the, that your Holy Spirit would send ministering angels to her side, that you would that you would dispatch the warrior angels right now to combat the enemy that is trying to destroy her and trying to convince her in her mind that that is the, that is the solution. Or we just declare right now that that is not the solution. We declare that we plead the blood of Jesus over this mom right now, Lord. That because if if she's a single mom, then she's got she's got responsibility. She's got children. She's got people that are looking that that are that depend on her. But Lord, we just pray right now that you would reveal that to her in whatever way you need to, Lord. And we just declare that her freedom is going to become right now the freedom from this the spirit of suicide. Because we understand where that comes from. That comes from the pits of hell, and that's where it needs to go back to. It comes from the from from the second heaven, that 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 realm of of operation that the enemy that that they operate in. Lord, we just declare right now that your heaven would come down forth. Lord, we call forth your heaven right now and your ministering angels. We just declare right now that she would be set free, that she would see her purpose in life, and that she would see her value, and that she is worth it. Lord, we just speak this right now in Jesus' name and will. Amen. Amen. So I wanted, I just wanted to interject. I did not want to wait around. That, that To me, that's not something to play around with. Let's take care of that right now. So please continue to be, pray. It doesn't matter what her name is. It's just a single mom right now. So just continue to keep her in prayer. Go ahead, Myron. Oh, I must have, I might have hit your button. Sorry. Can you hear me now? Okay. Yeah, I really enjoyed uh the the message today about uh forgiveness. Forgiveness is uh really huge, you know. Uh like I said, it's almost like if you can't get to that point of forgiveness, you know, you really can't move on to the next stage of uh getting closer with Christ. Uh, you know, just because you uh be kind of fixated for separated on how that person has done you wrong you know and once you actually fully give it over to christ you know it, it's like a burden just been relieved from you you know uh, i know at uh, church on sunday uh our pastor preached from colossians third chapter uh eight and uh i'm reading from the amplified it says uh, but now rid yourselves completely of all these things anger rage malice slander uh obstinance, uh, uh, abusive, filthy, vulgar language from your mouth, you know, pretty much saying, you know, you just have to let these things go, you know, because uh, if you read farther, it, it kind of talks about, you know, it, it affects your spiritual person, you know, so uh, really good message today, and I enjoyed it. Yeah, that's a, that's a powerful, powerful verse too, man, big time. All right, Shannon, I'm writing down. Okay, I'm getting some of these. All right, anybody else? I'm going to write down these prayer requests if y'all want to. Anybody else got anything they want to share or questions that they may have?
Nobody I was, I was I was just reading something that's pretty stinking interesting. Um, Mike can, can probably speak on this, being the farmer green thumb that he is, and some of the garden people that are on there. Uh, talking about going back to what Justin was talking about, and his mom talking about those seeds. It says, uh, "Light is not necessary for a seed to germinate." All right. And then the next part says all plants require light to grow their roots. Is anybody else seeing in that what I'm seeing when we're concerning seeds? Talking about those bad seeds that we just got through talking about. The light is Christ. Those bad seeds don't require light to grow. But to get a root and to get a root and a foundation of something, it requires light. It requires Jesus. Man, I... I don't know if, when I read that, it spoke a ton to me. It's just like we were talking about the soul. You know, the first thing that when I heard it, I got to think it on a personal level, thinking about these seeds. And especially when um, Sheila come on and was talking about the parents and the grandparents and our children. You know, and I'm prime suspect being transparent. My kids come in the house. Daddy, somebody did something to me at the day of school and my hair stand up on my neck. And you, If they hit you, you hit them back. You know, we all been, you know, guilty of that at one part or another, one time or another. But there's another side that I'll, that also. So um, in the seeds of this growing thing called homosexuality that's in the world today, you know, our, our children face that. It's in the face every single day. Every time you turn on the TV, it's on there. No matter what channel, even on Disney Channel, it's on there. So these kids are being faced with this. The seeds that are in the parents' and the grandparents' hearts to combat this may not be proper seeds as well. Because thinking of me before I press into the Lord, if my son come in asking questions about homosexuality or talking about feelings or emotions or thoughts in that homosexuality realm before I got the person in the Lord, the first thing I would do is, we got to find you a little girl. We got to do this and point him in the direction outside of homosexuality, but point him in the direction of later fornication. So covering up one, omitting one seed that could spurt. God sees sin for sin. So you know, I think a lot of the times we, I guess, in the flesh, we think some things are okay. Some things are wrong, but not as wrong as other things. And we'll let Seeds get fertilized, thinking it's the lesser of two evils. And I believe if we say the lesser of two evils in anything, we are wrong. Because we should not be in agreement with any evil. And, you know, that's just being transparent of me and how I've handled things in the past and whatnot. But now I have a whole new light on things of how every good thing comes from heaven, comes from the Lord. So if it's something that's bad or something uncomfortable, I know where that comes from. It comes from the enemy. And Sean did a good um, job teaching tonight. And it really speaks to the mind as well as the heart. That if you seek God in everything, all things, he's got answers for everything that you don't, which is life in general. When you think you've got the answers, you may need to get in your word and dig a little deeper because that's what really affects me in that, seed planting and seed nurturing and seed fertilizing you know whether it be good seed or bad seed so now how i combat these things of the world when it comes to my kids is turning them on to scripture you know i was talking to mike and i was talking to the guys uh the other day at work and i'm super super proud of my son right now because he's 15 years old and he worries about his father going through the situation but He's worrying and he's praying, not just worrying. He texted me the other day and almost got me into tears where he says, Dad, I'll be glad when this is all over. I'm tired of this. I pray for you every day. You know what? I'm not doing a vain pat on the back because it ain't Shannon. It's the light through me. But now I'm seeing how to plant those proper seeds because when we're in distress, where do we go? Not to alcohol, not to drugs, we go to prayer. And my son is getting that at 15 years old. 
So the seed is already planted. When I walk through this, he's going to see it works. And now when I'm dead and gone and he's in his 40s or 50s and he goes into a place where he's in trial and tribulation, he'll always have that seed of knowing that prayer works. Man, that's huge. That's huge. We're seeing it every day. The word that come to me this morning while we were in prayer, it was um, chill. And Sean, you hit on that tonight. I was like, look at God. We're transitioning. We're shifting. God is calling for a shift where we get out of the flesh. We get out of this worldly way of thinking, our own understanding. We start seeing things in a more spiritual way. Things start changing. Things start moving. Things start happening that we don't even care to understand anymore. We're just happy that it's happening. We see it every day. And I've got a, a praise report here after everybody gets through on that shift because I had a little shifting in my life today and I'm, I'm pretty excited about it. So I'll share that at the end when everybody gets through. Amen, amen. All right, anybody else? If not, I've got a, a, a little bit of a list of prayer requests that we're going to call out, and then we'll let Shannon finish up with a praise report and let him close us out in prayer. Um, I'll reiterate this again. If you will go to the YouTube link, um, you should have gotten it today uh, with the re with the reminder that went out about this. Um, I try to send out reminders every Tuesday around 4 o'clock. I try to automate it that way. But if you've missed any of them, just go to the YouTube page, hit the subscribe, like, share. It'll know you, notify you when a new uh, new one's been uploaded. So if there's something that was on here tonight that you missed, you can go back and listen to it again. Listen to it, watch it, whatever. Um, but all that stuff is in that uh, that library. Um, next week, we're going to get into the next lesson of this, which is going to be shifting atmospheres. Um it, it, this really gets to be a lot of fun. I, I promise you, this is this is very interesting. It's it's not super complex. I mean, yeah, there's going to be work. I mean, just like the farmers on here talked about. I mean, you got to do some tilling, right? You, you got to do some weeding. You got to take. You, you got to do some tending. I mean, if you go back to Genesis, I mean, where did God put Adam? He put him in the garden to tend to it, take care of it, not to just let the weeds grow. So we got to do a bit, a little bit of work. And I promise you that if you do the do the work that's necessary now, later down the road, the maintenance that's involved is not going to be very much. I can assure you, I can tell you that from experience that there's going to be some hard, hard knocks to try to get, you know, if we've allowed a lot of those, those weeds and those bad trees and all that stuff to grow, once you get all that stuff cleaned out and you got a nice manicured lawn. <laughs> uh let me see i did see that one dustin i did see that request from your mom so i've got that on here um and actually uh, i think that um craig has got something that he he put in there too to share with that so um yes i i, I did get that shield thank you so if nobody else has anything i'm going to start in prayer all right Real quick, Lord, we just thank you for the night. We thank you for this word that's been brought forth, Lord. We thank you for this very simple, but very powerful, powerful, powerful concept of forgiveness, Lord. We pray that this root, this root of forgiveness, Lord, has taken deep root inside of us, Lord, that it has branched out and, and made some solid foundation in us, Lord, that, that we can see great and, and sweet fruit comes from this this tree of forgiveness lord this tree this root that's been planted tonight we thank you for that lord we thank you for the revelation uh of things in our life lord as we come to you and the opportunity we get to do to come to you and see where we've gotten some things off lord we just thank you that we can come to you and that you'll speak to us and that you'll have relationship with us uh to reveal these things lord tonight we lift up uh these prayer requests to you uh, and know that you are, uh, that you hear all these things, Lord, but we want to make them known and, and and continue to come into agreement against these things. So, Lord, right now, we lift up Jeanette Gibson as tomorrow. She's going to be undergoing surgery. Um, that's going to be a pretty major surgery, Lord, but we know that you can be in the midst of that and that you bring healing, Lord. We ask that you would uh, guide the hands of the doctors and all those involved with their care. Lord, give her husband and her children peace about this situation. Uh, don't let them be 
riddled with with fear or anxiety about mom having to go under the knife, but Lord, we just pray that it would be calculated and it would be precise and that what's needed to be done is done quickly. And Lord, that the healing would commence and, and, and continue there as well. Lord, we just, on top of that, as far as surgeries are concerned, we thank you for the healing of Brother Frank and his foot. He underwent surgery this week, as well as Morgan, and she went uh, underwent her having her gallbladder taken out. I got both good reports from them. So we give you praise on those things and, and continue to ask that you would um, perpetuate and continue the healing process to complete healing in all of them. Lord, we lift up Billy Wyman and his mom. Lord, we pray for her in the beginning with this mass in her lungs. Lord, we pray that uh, you would continue to minister to that for to, so that she could receive her complete healing and give you and you alone all the praise and the glory. Lord, we continue <clears throat> to lift up Michael uh, and his family as his dad is is uh, is in the process, you know, however long that may be. But Lord, we just pray and thank you for the time that he's able to spend with him, his sisters, and, and the continuing evolving relationships that are growing because you have been in the middle of this, Lord. We thank you for that peace. We thank you for the love and that, that moments of opportunity that can be cherished for a lifetime of the good times that were that were had. And Lord, we just thank you and lift you up for that, Lord. We thank you and uh, Lord, we continue to lift up this single mom uh, that we spoke about earlier that is that is um, facing and she's having a, a battle with suicide, Lord, right now. And in Jesus' name and his power and authority, we curse the tree that does but not doesn't produce fruit. We curse suicide. We curse depression right now. And there's a, there's some young people that are dealing with that. Sheila had mentioned this in the chat. Uh, Lord, we lift them up right now. These these people who are dealing with these onslaughts of depression and anxiety and and, and suicide and all these things and the negative words spoken, Lord. We pray that you would quench the fiery arrows of the negative words spoken over us, Lord. That are that are, that are meant to bring harm to us. And Lord, we just ask that your shield would be over us, Lord, and that, that 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 those fiery arrows would be extinguished and quenched, Lord, in Jesus' name. Lord, we lift up Myron right now as he's having a having a he's facing the court battle tomorrow. Lord, we just lift him up and give him uh, give him the the strength and courage to do what's right, to do what's to do what he needs to do, Lord. But we pray for a for a good outcome, for a positive outcome in this situation, Lord. Lord, we pray you know the truth and you know where those children need to be and where they will gain growth, Lord. You know all this situation, Lord. And I know for a fact, Lord, because I've been in that situation, Lord. I know that you can bring peace, you can bring calmness, you can bring fruit to that situation. And Lord, we right now, we just declare that any lie that is spoken and any ugliness is spoken, Lord, that you would shut the mouth of that and to speak in it, Lord. We just declare that in Jesus' name. Lord, we lift up uh, Sherry's mom, Joy, tonight, Lord, as she is continuing to battle with some health conditions, Lord. We pray that you would give her peace about that. You would give Sherry and her family peace about that. And Lord, that, that healing would commence and would come to them right now, Lord, and that she would receive that freely and give you praise and glory. Lord, we lift up right now. Uh, there's there's a group of parents that are that are taking parenting classes at Mag. Lord, we pray that you would that they would be open to receive the counsel and the instruction and be guided in learning to be good parents, Lord, so that they can keep the custody of their children and they can keep that family nucleus together. Lord, we understand and know that the enemy's scheme is to come against the family nucleus and try to tear that down. But Lord, we come against that right now. We stand with aggression against that, Lord. We put our foot down on your word and declare that. That family is the root of all relationships, the things growing, Lord. And we just thank you for that. We pray that you would continue to minister to those families that are taking that. And Lord, right now, we just uh I, I think that's I think that's it, Lord. I, I thank you for this time that we'll be able to come to you. Lord, we're continuing to pray for Dustin uh and his next assignment, Lord, that um this position in Pensacola uh is held open and it's waiting for him to show up because. He needs to get to the beach and get some uh, sun on his white legs and 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 really help bring his family back together. His wife and his children really want him to be at the beach, and we'd love for him to be here too. So, Lord, we just know that you're hearing our request. We lift these up to you right now uh, in Jesus' name. And, Gage, you have one? Pray. Okay. Pray, God. Martin. Luke. His foot. We back up. Luke? Yes. Is that your friend, Luke? Yes. Okay, Lord, we just lift up Luke, Gage's friend right now, and that you administer his foot. And he's having some problems with his foot, Lord. We just pray that you would put your hand around his foot yeah. and bring healing 
In Jesus' Je name. In Jesus' name, yes. all right? All right, Lord, we just thank you, give you praise and honor and glory. And in your name and will, we declare these things. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. I said. Yeah, now we're going to let... Yeah. We're going to let Shannon give a praise report, and then he's going to close us out in prayer. Okay. All right. Um, y'all are the first people to know this, because I consider y'all my family. Uh, during this season that I've been in, it's been some ups and downs like a roller coaster, but I have a reason to be happy. I was on late, uh, came on late tonight, because me and Melissa sat out, and we had a long conversation. We've been knowing each other for five years, and we are officially a couple today. So, but that's a couple, not dating without purpose. That's a couple to date with purpose of being married and serving the Lord as a family. So I'm pretty excited about that. pa lay <laughs> young. Hey, dear. Hey, single life suck. Single life suck. I ain't single no more. <laughs> John, what was that about September we were talking about the other day? Uh-huh. <laughs> See, hey, right. hey, I'm gonna tell you right now. If it was tomorrow, I would, I would say yes. She's a great woman. I was hoping that she would be on there, but we got ministry. She's out doing her thing. But um, I'm proud of her. I'm very proud of. Her. I've known her for five years, and like I said, I was rough. You know, I came out of a very bad relationship, and I didn't trust nobody. I was not letting another person get get close to my heart to hurt me again. Uh, she also came out the same. But we seen a light in each other, and it kept us together. You know, making this travel through this wilderness together as friends. And we finally came to the realization that neither one of us are going anywhere. So I think we make a good team and we're going to pray to the Lord. Hey, if you see fit in your will, let it let this happen because I love her kids. She loves mine. And I think we'd be a good family. Yeah. So that's my praise report. <laughs> praise the Lord. Am I blushing? Can y'all see? You as red as that shirt, bro. You as red as that shirt. Yep. Yeah. All right. I'll pray this out unless anybody else got anything. All right. Lord, we come to you thanking you, Lord Jesus. With all this bad in the world, we can still find a reason to smile. We can still find a reason to laugh. We can still find a reason to be happy, Lord Jesus. And it's because of you. The things that you've done for us, the things that you're doing for us, and the things that you will do for us, Lord Jesus. But not only the things that you do, who you are. That's where the true joy comes through. Through your grace, Lord Jesus, because your grace is unconditional love for us. And we thank you for that right now. We thank you for that. We can't thank you enough just for your grace, just for your mercy, just for being who you are, doing what you already accomplished, that's written in your word to give us hope. Lord Jesus, we thank you for hope. We thank you for every person that's on this uh, Zoom call tonight, Lord Jesus. We thank you for the congregation coming together to pray for the body of Christ. We thank you for the congregation coming together to edify each other as your word told us to do. Thank you for the obedience of every soul that's on this group. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen, amen. We love y'all. Yes, Dustin, we're praying for you to get some sun on them legs. Love you, Gage. Love you. Love y'all. Love you. We'll see you next week. Love you, back. I'm going to pray a quick prayer for Shannon. He going off to tell him in the morning. Love y'all. Love you. Bye. 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 Bye.